welcome to our uh, board meeting this evening. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. The first item on our agenda uh, under letter B is the consent items, and that would be approval of the minutes from the August 22nd regular meeting, um, approval of the certification of the executive meeting on August 12th, 2022, approval of the minutes of the September 12th, 2022 regular meeting, and approval of the minutes for the September 12th, 2022 study session. Board, did you have a chance to look through these? Any questions or concerns regarding the minutes? Any questions or concerns from the community regarding the consent items? Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to um, approve the minutes uh, for August 22nd, um, regular meeting, uh, August 12th, executive meeting, uh, September 12th, regular meeting, and the September 12th study session at this time. If I have a motion. So moved. Kyle, thank you. Second. Thank you, Tom. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Moving on to the funds report, which is always a highlight of my week. I just want you to know that, Todd. Okay. If you would, please. About, about that <laughs> uh, Education fund in August, we had receipts of $1,048,202.47 and expenses of $1,003,670.96. Cash balance in the education fund at the end of August is $662,933.28. Debt service fund had receipts of $5,891.39. There were no expenses in August in the debt service fund. Cash balance at the end of August is $1,228,092.24. And in the operations fund, we had receipts of $7,874.47. Uh, expenses of $431,764.08. Our cash balance at the end of August is $965,802.88. Any questions on the fund report? Okay. And, uh, If, uh, if any of you, uh, anybody in the audience have a, audience have a question uh, or comment about the funds report? Okay, at this time I'll accept a motion to approve the funds report as read. So moved. Thank you, Kyle. Second. Thank you, Kyle. Kyle and Kyle. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. <coughs> Next is the approval of claims totaling one million two hundred seventy-eight dollars, two hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars, seven hundred thirty dollars and thirty-one cents. Anything to add, Todd? No. Okay. Um, any questions on the claims? Questions from the community. Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the claims as read. So moved. Second. Thank you, Joe and Tom. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Next item is uh, approval of payrolls, totaling $1,011,167.16. And those are the payrolls from August 26th, September 9th. 
and yeah, they're the same. Okay. Um, any questions on those payrolls? <coughs> any questions from the community? All right. At this time, I'd accept a motion to approve the payrolls as as presented. So moved. Thank you, Kyle. Second. Thank you, Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. <coughs> motion carries six to zero. My cohorts make fun of me because I prefer paper to um, to digital, but I like to make notes on my stuff, so, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. see, see where I live? Okay. Uh, action items. Approval of the bus driver payroll schedule for the 2022-2023 school year. This is Vance. Anything you want to share? So um, the transportation department and, and I want to thank the board for their support in regards to moving the bus drivers to a 185-day contract. I think it's been very helpful. We have uh, two more drivers, I think, that are onboarding right now, which will help um, with our bus driver situation and, and our routes and making sure the entire routes and fleet are covered. In that, in order for us to set those contractual amounts, we went through and broke everything down by um, years of experience, the miles that they run, any shuttles that they may run. Daily premiums would be for those drivers who go outside of Rochester school districts. We do pick up students from other school districts. And then the daily total, so that would be what their contractual amount Brenda's figuring those on. Okay. Any questions on this uh, schedule that was uh, sent to us? I think the only question I had was why are some highlighted in yellow? I, don't know. I think those indicated increases or a change of some sort. Okay. Prior than prior years. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that, Amber. Any questions from the board? Any questions from uh, the audience? I will entertain a motion to approve uh, the bus driver payroll schedule for 2022-2023. Casey. And the second was Wait. Joe. Thank you, Joe. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And the next is the authorization to approve, or excuse me, to proceed with general obligation bond offering. We had a lengthy discussion about this at the study session. Is there anything else you want to add, Mrs. Hans? I don't believe so. This would just be the boards giving us the approval to go ahead and move forward with all of the public hearings, the resolutions, those types of things. So, yeah, it's the first step on the timeline that Ice Miller's set for us. Any questions, folks? Any questions from the community? <clears throat> if not, um, I'll accept a motion to uh, authorize uh, proceeding to with the general obligation bond offering. So moved. Thank you, Tom. Second. Sure. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Approval of the teachers credit union two year agreement. Anything you want to share there, Mrs. Vance? Todd, if you want to. Um, so, in looking at the economy right now, obviously interest, the government's looking to raise interest rates. So going into this, um, when I asked TCU to kind of give us something to, to start with, um, I had them prepare two options, one that was based off of a fixed rate for the two year period and one that was based off of uh, variable rate. And um, so we got the proposal and we forwarded it to Baker Tilly and Baker Tilly um, then there's a couple gentlemen there that, that looked at it. Um, they're involved with RFPs all the time so they have a good idea of what is out there for schools and what are, what's fair for the, the banks offer. So they looked at over, they felt they felt the proposal was was fair, that the, the uh, fees were comparable to, to what other banks charged. They thought the interest rate was fine. Um, they felt their recommendation to me, and I agreed after they showed me uh, some uh, scenarios, was that the variable rate um, had gone up, had just gone up at the end of July 
obviously it hasn't happened yet, but at the end of this month, they're expected to raise it at least another quarter to a half. So they told me even if in three months or six months, the rate gets dropped to zero, we're still gonna, the worst case scenario, we're gonna make the same interest on the variables with, with the fix. So um, assuming that it, those rates stay high for any amount of time, we should do better over the two year period with the variable rates. And TCU's been very good to us since I've been here. Um, situations where I call them on Saturday nights because we have issues with credit cards and we have students in Oklahoma. Um, and they've got it fixed so that we didn't have anyone sleeping in a bus or a, eight or nine people in a room. They've been very good at, at, at help. So um, it's a good relationship for us. And, uh, good to know. Any questions from the board? Any questions or comments from the community? I will enter, well, I'll entertain a motion that we approve the teacher's credit union agreement. As Todd explained it, the variable rate. So moved. Thank you, Casey Second. and Tom. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Um, the next item is the information. It will be the first reading of the policies and uh, policies that we are looking at for uh, this for today are uh, bylaw 0142.3, policy number 1213.01, policy number 1216, policy number 3213.01, policy 3216, policy 4213.01, and policy, I'm reading it here, sorry, 4216, 4216, sorry. Those would be the uh, seven policies that are currently, um, that have currently come to us. Now, um, I just want to share that um, we receive policy updates and notifications from NEOLA, which is a company that is um, uh, works with several states in our area. And uh, according to their website, 231 of the 230 something of the 291 school corporations in Indiana use NEOLA for their updates. This comes from federal law, which is passed down to the state which is passed down to us. Um, one of the comments that I could make is, um, I don't like paying taxes, okay? But it's the law. And uh, I could choose not to pay my taxes, but there are repercussions from that that I choose not to have. So we pay our taxes. Um, I also would like to see the speed limit on State Road 25 in front of my house be about 35 miles per hour because uh, it would be a lot safer for my family and I as we're trying to get in and out of our driveway on a daily basis. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to happen. Uh, I'd also like to see the speed limit around 465 in Indianapolis up to about 80 because that's where everybody's driving anyway. But that's not the law. I can drive 80 if I want to risk a big fat ticket but I don't want to part with my money that quickly, so I don't. Uh, do I push it? Sure, I, I drive with the flow of traffic. But it's a federal law. These things are, are given to us. They come through NEOLA. NEOLA basically puts them into language that we can incorporate into our policies. And that is, uh, we get tons of stuff from NEOLA. We have spent I've been on the policy committee since I started on the board, and I don't know how many hours we've spent in policy committees. Some of them we really have to talk about. Some of them are pretty cut and dry in that we have to do X, Y, and Z. Others we get to choose. We're gonna choose this, this, and this. But the option of we don't want this policy really isn't an option. So I know there are uh, concerns, and it was uh, made, um, made clear on social media. Uh, I'm a Facebook person, so some things got around to us. And I just want to share with you that it is a law, and we, we are bound to follow it, as is every other school corporation in the state of Indiana. 
So, with that, are there any questions from the board or any comments? Any questions from the community? I'm working with by the state IC codes or the federal IC codes stating that these need to be, these bylaws need to be passed. Because I haven't seen a state code at all regarding. The state code, when you go into our website and you look under the board information, you can click on, there's a little thing, like three or four lines of te uh, there, you can click on to get other screens. And in those, you will see um, board. And if you click on public information, click on public information, and then click on this board meeting, and you will have all of the um, policies that we are looking at this evening. And uh, in each of those individual sheets, the IC code is there. And a lot of them aren't IC codes. You know, a lot of these, a lot of the, the ones that I'll say tend to be very contentious actually are, are federal. They're coming down from Title IX, Title VI, Title IV, Equal Opportunity. I mean, it's, these are federal laws that carried across the nation. And a lot of times, um, they're hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages long. To read them, it's a yarn ball. So the majority of people don't even know they exist. Uh, to be quite honest. So if you see anything that says Title IX and they're Roman numerals, you know, uh, Title I X, you know, it'll say that those are all federal statutes. So. Uh, there are three policies that fall into this category um, regarding the dress and grooming. Um, one of them is uh, 1216 and that is relating to staff members. One. Uh, excuse me, 3216, which is relating to, that's professional staff, teaching staff, and the other is a non-certified staff that would be anybody who is not a licensed teacher. And, and then, uh, yeah, support staff, actually. And uh, 4216, which is, I believe, related to um, administration. 4216 is support staff. Sorry, support staff. Administration would be a one. Yeah. Okay, that's the first one. Yeah. And then two, two is, is program. Okay. Yeah. This is just, I mean, and I'm on the committee. But yeah, they're all this. Just, this is just all, yeah. It, there's plenty of production. They're, all, they're all the same code. That's what Katie's trying to tell you. There's just different kind of levels process. in the school corporation as far as support okay. staff policy, admin policy, and even student policy, program policy. But it's the same, it's coming from the same federal statute saying everyone has to follow this. So you'll see the same language in all of these different subsections. And there's three of them up there tonight. And, and the, other, the other part of that is this is the first reading and we are required by law to do three readings before we take a vote. So those things being said, is there any comment from anyone in the community? Okay. So we will move on. The next item on the agenda is donations. Can I ask a question? I'm a little late. Sorry. Uh, I guess. Regarding the votes, I mean, if it's federally mandated, then do you guys have the right to refuse? To vote that in, or we're just going to vote it in regardless. Well, I mean, well, we we can we can vote no. I mean, we have the choice to vote no, all any time on any issue. But the other the other side of that is, if we do not implement federal and state policy, we risk funding. Now, the annual budget for the school corporation is some exorbitant amount. I don't even want to guess what it is because I see the week the, the monthly budget and it just scares me to death but it's millions and millions of dollars and that money comes primarily from the state and some from the federal government and Even, plus the lawsuits I mean, and it's yes it is it's lawsuits if we don't implement this um, so for us to not implement this would be so there could be lawsuits the other direction as well am I incorrect if you I, implement these and it goes against like my child's rights and what we believe in, there could be a lawsuit there as well. I, I, I truly appreciate what you're saying, but you would have to prove that we are violating a state or federal statute. 
in regards to your child's rights. Um, I want you to know that I have five grandchildren in this district, and um, one of the some of the most outspoken people that talk to me about this stuff grew up in my house. Okay, and they have they they share their opinions, and as they have that right, as they have that right. But this is regarding dress and appearance and clean and neat grooming. And I'd like to say, you know, it's funny because I'm very familiar with the different laws and different jobs that I've had. And one way to think of this is I know what the 2022 mentality is when you read this sentence um, is not required to wear clothing that is typical of their birth gender. I understand that. If my grandmother was sitting next to me and I said, what is, what is your clothing typical of your birth gender? She would say dresses, nylons, high heels. If you asked me, I would say blue jeans, capris, t-shirts, tank tops, pretty much anything I feel like wearing. Now, if I asked her who wore blue jeans and t-shirts, she would say that's a man. A man wears those clothes. It's, there are different school corporations, not necessarily Rochester, but there are different school corporations in different states. There's different, um, you know, mentalities in all of those. And, you know, this language also goes to that. It doesn't just go to, you know, something that is going to be forced on your child. Nothing's being forced on your child. This is just saying you dress professionally, you can dress the way you want to dress as long as it's professional and in the manner of the corporation. That's easy to say when you're talking about a female with pants, but when you're talking about a male that may be coming in with a dress on that our children have known for three, four years, that's so very different. So what is the reality that things in the school are going to change and our children seeing these things, asking questions and becoming confused? What is the reality that that's going to happen in our school? You know, I, I don't have a crystal ball and I cannot predict the future. Um, you know, offhand, I don't know if I, of anyone that we could expect this from, but that doesn't mean I'm all knowing and all seeing. Um, it, is, it is what it is. And again, it's, it's a non-discrimination statute. And yes, ma'am. It exists in every other type of system that is out there. So even in like a hospital system, this verbiage is used throughout all of the language that is present for every corporation, for every, it, just because it's in the school system, it doesn't make us less likely to have to follow the federal mandate. Am I understanding that correctly? That is correct. And we could lose how much of our, I mean, if our, if our budget is say 90% federal dollars, then we don't have, there's not a choice as to whether or not you should, you, we pick and choose as a community what we are going to discriminate against or what we are going to say, oh, we think this is, that's not how it works. We have to accept the laws as they are and follow them according to how the federal government stipulates that, correct? Yes, and that was my example about the taxes. Yeah. Property taxes, no fun. I don't like writing those checks, but, I prefer that to having someone take over our property. And, and again, if you're looking at a multi-million dollar budget and, and risking that as prudent stewards and representatives, um, I can't, in the best interest of kids, vote that we should not approve this policy. But that's my personal opinion. Yes, sir. Thank you for recognizing me. My name is David. So, um, just thinking here about the upstream and downstream changes that, uh, that uh, could come into play here. So, if a male teacher identifies as a female, and which restroom would he be allowed to use? He, which restroom would he be allowed to use, even though he identifies as a female and dresses as a female in front of his class, when it's time for him to powder his nose, does he go to the boys' restroom for policy with the school corporation or does he go to the girls' restroom? 
we we cannot direct an individual one way or another. So he could go into the little girl's bathroom where children are? To be honest with you, the, the staff have their own bathrooms. Staff have their own he could bathroom. still, though, not use that and still go into the student's restroom, am I correct? We have, we have faculty are not forced to use faculty restrooms as far as I'm concerned. I believe they could use any restroom they want, can't they? Faculty? They could. They could. So we could actually see a bored male man identifying as a woman, wearing a dress, and marching right into the little girl's bathroom with several little girls in there, a grown man, and there we have a problem. Much bigger problem than if we have just a dress code according to identity versus birth gender. Please are, address that. You are correct. You are correct. That would be. I, I don't like. I don't like being correct. My 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 position is: What are we going to do about it? How do we keep that from happening? Because we all know that that is something that's going to scare the hell out of everybody. What do we do about that? And the teacher thing is one thing, and I never even thought of that, which agitates me a little bit more. But the fact that there's been what I would consider secret squirrel conversations about transgender bathroom going into Riddle, and maybe you or whoever doesn't care, but I have a seven-year-old little girl that her own father doesn't go to the bathroom at the same bathroom at the same time. So how is it okay for me, trying to raise a little girl, to love everybody, but to accept that there's a kid, which there is a child, that's in the next stall with a different gender, if there's even a stall. So that's, the fact that it's like secret conversations, and I pay for my kid to come to the school corporation agitates me enough. But the fact that it's happening and there's no communication about it. We why, have, where can my little girl go to the bathroom? We have, you talk we, about lawsuits, that looks like that's riddled with, with the opportunity for multiple lawsuits against the school district, and that, that really concerns me. And the first time I find out that my little girl is going to the bathroom with another gender, I mean, that there's going to be a problem. So where can my little girl go to the bathroom? Where that's not going to happen. I think we've got a bigger issue than what we thought. I with all due maybe, respect, with all I, due respect to every one of you here, in all sincerity, with all due respect, we've got a bigger issue here than what, than what we're talking about just dressed here. I think addressing kind of both of what your statements were on one side, one thing you need to understand, this board doesn't take anything of what you're saying lightly. But we understand your concerns. It's been a conversation between us, all of us, definitely in the policy committee, because the federal law literally dictates for schools what they can and cannot communicate about any child. That's the first thing that needs to be understood. And I'm not talking names. I don't even know anyone. It doesn't saying. matter. The, the well, federal law, the state laws there. do not allow anyone to discuss anything about any child. Your child, their child, my child, her grandchildren, their children. No child. Period. Dot. End of story. So I understand, I understand what you're saying about communication, but by law, we are not allowed to. Well, now, as far as addressing... The concerns, Sorry. we are doing what we are able to that the federal law does not tie. It's not a secret squirrel that we are trying to revamp all of the schools to make sure there are multiple bathrooms, there are unisex bathrooms, there are single, sex, single stall bathrooms, there are you know, the old staff bathrooms to change those into a bathroom that any child can use. Um, so that they have options and every child has options no matter which child it is um, they can use any bathroom even the ones in the nursing stall or a nurse's office and again before you go off about well why should my child do something different we are doing what we are able to that the federal law does not um, that allows us to and we're doing the best we can and we're open to suggestions that are constructive and within those federal laws. I'm always open to hear anybody's suggestion, but we went through every single school and have a plan to try to address that as best we can. So, David? Has, has it been discussed uh, for someone who identifies 
in a different gender that they have to use the facilities according to their born gender? Nope. No, nope. can't, can't do, that. do that. If that's a federal law? That is a federal just, law. You, can't, but it's you not, cannot do it. So you that's, cannot re require them to use nope. any facility. Gotcha. Thank you just make sure there's a lot of different options available. I mean, that is literally, that's the best Back option. Back to my initial question, they do have an option to use whatever bathroom they want. Any child does in that classroom, or, in any classroom. Or, or faculty member. Or faculty member. I suppose. Yeah. I, it, that's a yes or no. It doesn't relate to just children. So yes, it's actually, Title IX goes to adults. It goes to any working environment. Well, it's the hospital, it's Kroger, every, it's every schools. Every single environment that has federal funding behind it, whether it's a school, whether it's a nursing home, whether it's a hospital, mm -hmm. it's all connected to Title IX and anti, we don't want to run into a situation where we're discriminating against anybody based on gender, race, religion, any of those things. That's what Title IX is tied to. Am I not, is that correct? correct? Yes, it's true. But you, you have the opportunity to attend a public school or you can homeschool your children or they can go to private school. So there are other options available if, if people say, we don't want our kid getting a public school education, if this is part of a public school education, then you have the ability to say, I don't want my child in this, this school. Go ahead, my tax money back. Yeah. <laughs> that's not how it works. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, but that's the reality. That's that's the reality of the federal laws. We don't we don't get to pick and choose as a community which federal laws we get to file, follow and don't. That's just the reality. On both sides of it. It, it I mean it, no matter how much your own personal belief is one way, we don't have the ability until we vote. That's why we vote in this country to say, and that's a fact. you know what I mean? That's what changes it. So if it's something that like upsets it. us, we have to get to the polls. You have to go vote your way. I have to vote my way. Well, you guys are voting on this one, two, one says, and it's more or less saying, this is what we're voting on. This is what we want is, is to dress accordingly, dress however you want to dress. And if you vote yes to this, <clears throat> then you're more or less saying it's okay. No, we're saying we're following the law, yeah. literally. We didn't write it. We did not change this language. We didn't write this language. Well, this language give, was to given to us law. by the policy consultant saying, here are the Title IX statutes. Here are the ones coming down the pike. Everyone is allowed to, or required to have in their code. We have to vote to put it in the policy because it's in the bylaws, we have to vote for any policy to change, be amended, or added. That's why we're voting on a lot of these policies. I'm sorry, I mean, I'm sorry. I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's literally it. That's what our bylaws require us to do to add the policy to our policy manual. And this will come to a vote at the November board meeting. Because it will, we will have the second reading in October, and the third will be at the November meeting. Do you but think? Line, if you vote yes on this, then you're, you're just saying it's okay. Do you think it would be beneficial to, once you vote on this and as a board, um, you pass this and the knee jerk reaction from the public, do you think it would be beneficial to send a letter out and discuss all the things we've discussed here tonight? And tell them what the pros and cons are to this, and the and uh, the at risk we put the children in with with adults who are identifying as different gender and everything. That every one of the board members signs that and just put a mass mailing out so everyone understands that this is what's going to happen. This is the risk there is, but by golly, we just got to do it and then have everyone sign it. Would that be beneficial to the community? You think? I am fairly I'm sure. I'm playing the devil's advocate here. I'm fairly sure there is a line in Title IX somewhere that says that's completely illegal. You guys <laughs> so know. I'm sorry. You guys are a pickle here. Sorry. <laughs> and, and the other thing, too, is I'm you know, I you know, this is public comment. It's really not public debate. I mean, it's not pu public board debate. It's public comment. And I certainly appreciate all of your concerns. 
both personally and professionally, I understand your concerns, and uh, we must move on. So we are now to uh, donations. And I lost my place, I don't know how that happened. Okay. <laughs> donations for the corporation, we're always overwhelmed by the uh, monies that people are willing to donate to us. And the first one is for Columbia <coughs> Elementary, $10, for the RCSC daycare from Mrs. Rigney. Columbia Elementary uh, amount was labor donated uh, by the First Christian Church to repair the old wood rails on the playground. Riddle Elementary, time, staff, and materials from Bollard Repairs, and that would be Todd Brooks. Uh, what work was done there, Luke, can I ask? There were a couple of bol bollards that were um, coming up. There's cement pieces, so it was wear and tear. And he noticed it when he was doing some of the sidewalk work near us, and he said he installed those previously, and he wanted to stand by his work. And so he came over and he made sure that they were in good shape. We, we appreciate, appreciate that. Thank you. RHS, three hundred dollars for a key club donation from the Kiwanis Club, <clears throat> Rochester High School, five hundred dollars for prom from the Fulton County Youth Center. Any questions or concerns about the donations? Yes, sir. Um, I'm also the um, part prom sponsor. I'm sure that was Valdez. And during COVID, of course, we had to cancel the prom. We lost the deposit. We, of course, refunded all the kids' money. Um, then we were stuck with you know all the decorations, which we used the next year. Anyway, we've gotten a year behind as far as funding. Um, Spoiler alert, things are more expensive. <laughs> and so um, we had $3.99 in the prom fund. And Mr. Haas said that wasn't enough. So um, anyway, Val and I reached out to some people. We don't want to raise the cost on the kids. It's already 25 bucks a student. We don't, to make, like to fund it all on our own, they would have to pay about 35. We're not willing to do that. And so um, through some different conversations, the youth center literally has money anything that touches a student in Fulton County, they can help with. And so graciously, they gave us, gave us this $500, which puts the deposit on the um, facility and 12 mile, which, uh, you know, we like that it's close. It's a really nice place. So we really want to give a shout out to the youth center for bailing us out. Absolutely. Thank you, Hope. Um, if anyone would like to make a motion, I would accept a motion at this time to approve the donations as reported. Um, Casey? Second. Thank you, Tom. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. The personnel report. Elementary Fall Intercession, Abby Wilson, Maynard, teacher, hourly rate of $40.18. Is it Maynard or Menard? Did I do it wrong? First one. Got it. Um, Sydney Stoiger, teacher, uh, hourly rate of $37.07 per hour. Don Howard, instructional assistant, an hourly rate of $12.76. Maternity leave. At Riddle Elementary, Olivia Rock, March 1st to May 1st, 20. Are we still talking about this past year? We're we looking at 2023. 2023. 2023. My, my bad there. Thank no, you. It's okay. Yeah. I just wanted to double check if that baby yeah. was born in March. She's already back to work. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, covered by Corinne Hines, and that will be an hourly rate. We'll make that correction to make sure that is uh, a daily rate of $140 per day. Columbia Fall Intercession Corrections. Hannah Clemens, hourly rate should be $12 per hour as an IA, not $36 as a teacher. Got it. We will make that correction as well. Yes. Got it. RHS, fall intercession. Lucy Hernandez for English language arts, arts and an hourly rate of $53.65. Ken Hughes, math, hourly rate of $62.97. Chelsea Correll, hourly rate of $53.65.
Deb Wolford MAP hourly rate of $62.97. Resignations. Dylan Perry, RHS custodian. RHS recommendation, athletic recommendation. Volleyball, RHS 2023. Varsity, Aaron Lee, stipend of $6,460. Assistant coach, Renee Durkis, stipend of $3,000. $395. Assistant coach Sarah Dalton, stipend $2,583. Riddle Volleyball, Aaron Lee, stipend, whoops, I hit the wrong button. I think I went down the whole page. Riddle Volleyball, Aaron Lee, stipend going to RHS, RHS, RMS, sorry. RHS Boys Basketball, head coach Rob Malcolm. Stipend $7,180. Varsity assistant coach Rex Reinhardt, stipend $3,770. Varsity assistant coach Sean Kelly, stipend $3,770. Freshman coach Wilson Lee, stipend $2,582. RMS boys basketball, eighth grade Isaac Schaefer, stipend $2,168. Seventh grade TJ Smith, Stipend $1,800. Elementary Boys Basketball, Riddle Elementary, Abby Overmeyer, stipend $1,800. K through two, Abby Overmeyer, stipend $900. RHS Girls Basketball, Varsity Head Coach, Joel Burris, stipend $7,180. Varsity Assistant Coach, Nate Basham, stipend $3,770. Varsity Assistant Coach Jacob Nye, stipend $3,770. RMS Girls Basketball, 8th grade, Adam Packer, stipend $2,168. 7th grade, Brooke Montgomery, stipend $1,800. 6th grade, A team, Ashley Du Bois, stipend $1,023. Riddle Girls Basketball, 3rd through 5th grade, Abby Overmeyer, stipend $900. K through two, Abby Overmeyer, stipend $450. RHS Wrestling, head coach, Clint Gard, stipend $4,000. JV coach, Bryce Roberts, stipend $1,300. JV coach, Tristan Wilson, stipend $1,300. JV coach, Derek Holloway, stipend $1,000. RMS Wrestling, head coach, Bryce Roberts, stipend $900. RMS assistant coach, Tristan Wilson, stipend $716. Riddle Wrestling, Black Team Head Coach David Beck, volunteer. Black Team Assistant Coach Justin Miller, volunteer. Black Team Assistant Coach Bryce Roberts, volunteer. Gold Head Coach Clint Garth, volunteer. Gold Assistant Coach Derek Holloway, volunteer. Gold Assistant Coach David Beck, volunteer. Gold Volunteer Coach Travis Horn, Volunteer, Gold Volunteer Coach Derek Beck, Volunteer, Gold Volunteer Coach Tristan Wilson, also a volunteer. Swimming, Head Coach Stephanie Brown, stipend $4,250. Assistant Coach Erica Abbott, $1,973. Assistant Coach Matt Steininger, stipend $1,973. Assistant Coach Bryn Wilson, $1,973. Any questions over the personnel report or correction? I just have one. Are they with the Riddle basketball? Are they starting the leagues back up <laughs> for third, three through five? I believe that's when they hold their camps. Is this the camp? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. There's no leagues. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions from the board regarding the personnel report? Any questions from the community regarding the personnel report? Who chooses the head coaches? Funding, so I see like Clint Guard doesn't make anywhere near like where the varsity basketball coaches like it. How do you? How does that? Just out of curiosity. So that's something that goes through dis discussions with our CTA and the amount is budgeted. Some coaches elect to take all of those funds and combine them together and break them up differently. So um, he has elected to um, spread that amongst his entire coaching staff where others work with the coaches or different coaches, um, but they each are allotted a specific amount of money and they work collectively to decide how to do that. And we give them that uh, leeway to do that. 
Any other questions? At this time, I'm going to enter in a motion to uh, accept the personnel report as read. So moved. Casey. Second. Joe, thank you. All those in favor? Motion carries 6 to 0. We move on to the superintendent's business. So we'll go through each of the principals on the last one to share uh, something really good that's happened since our last board meeting, something that they're working on behind the scenes, and then anything that they may need um, my help or support with or that at the board. So, Jason, if you'd like to launch us into that conversation, and we'll just go through sure. the different um, This week uh, on Friday, we've got our uh, Promise, Promise Indiana. It's my assistant. <laughs> Promise Indiana trip. Um, it's an annual trip. We didn't have it at, at one point uh, due to COVID, but we were able to have it last year. It's uh, through Promise Indiana and Ivy Tech. Uh, they host it, and we take our kindergarten kids down to Ivy Tech. Uh, they've got different stations set up, basically just to start uh, early with kind of career readiness, getting kids uh, not necessarily looking towards college, because 529 accounts work towards uh, any kind of secondary education, um, training, uh, certifications, welding, construction, things like that. But uh, so when they go down there, they get to see um, the, the welding setups they've got at Ivy Tech. They get to see the nursing setups. They get to see the law enforcement setups. Um, and they have people on staff that come in and work with the kids and do some fun activities. And it's a couple hour deal. And uh, we do it every year um, in, in uh, joint with uh, Promise Indiana. So that's something that we've got coming up. Uh, a couple other things we got coming up I'm going to let Luke talk about because they're uh, in conjunction together, uh, Riddle and Columbia, uh, over intercession. He can share that uh, so we don't hit it twice. Um, and then last week we had um, a presentation as well. Uh, Luke's going to mention that in his, in his discussions. Uh, that went really well. We had two of those uh, that took place at Columbia, and uh, the kids really enjoyed that. Um, We've been talking a lot about star cards and just uh, something that's going really well right now and has been going for a while in our building. Um, we're reaching the point of um, issuing, uh, we've issued about 8,000 star cards in the last uh, five to six years. If you're not familiar with star cards, okay, have a seat. <laughs> she brought two of her star cards. <laughs> they, they, came, they came in the mail today and that's all she's been talking about. But. Our star cards celebrate positive behaviors that our students uh, uh, show and our staff. We uh, share them with our staff as well. We've been doing this a while. I know that uh, the middle school does it, Riddle does it as well. Um, and it, all around though, it's uh, for our little kids, uh, it's a big deal to them. They really uh, appreciate the recognition. I appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and it's a nice way to recognize our kids. So that's been something that's, uh, as you can see, very, uh, beneficial for for recognizing our kiddos. So congratulations, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burnett. Yes. Um, as Mr. Schneider said, we uh, had our Eco Guardian presentation last week. That's where Duke Energy puts on a skit and talks about conserving energy. And uh, want to give a thank you to Sarah Downs. She organized that for us and got them here. Uh, last Friday, the fourth grade went to the Trail of Courage and had a great time. Uh, wanted to thank Transportation for getting us there and back, and, and uh, I know the middle school was there too. And as Mr. Schneider said, we have our fall enrichment activities scheduled um, in conjunction with Skeeter, thank you, with the bike safety on Tuesday, October 11th, and we have our big fall festival on Thursday, October 13th, and we sent those forms home today with the kids. So. Um, that's always a really good turnout for our fall festival and usually Snyder and I are grilling out so you're welcome to come check that out at Riddle and uh, we're just about two and a half weeks to the end of our first quarter and I just wanted to thank all of our teachers for doing the amazing job that they do every single day that, that bike uh, safety that we've got um, we've been working with the uh, Fulton County Sheriff's Department the dispatch um, and the uh, Fulton County Emergency Management Agency. And we've got um, helmets for every kid that comes. We're gonna give them, not usually we can afford to buy 10, 15, 20, and we give them to the, to the kids. They do a drawing or something. But this year, we're gonna make sure that every kid that attends gets a, gets a helmet, walks out of there with a helmet that they can use on a bike, skateboard. I don't know, just what, you know, we, we wanna get those into the hands of kids. So we appreciate their help. 
Don't, don't start the timer yet because I gotta talk for Cassie first. <laughs> um, I have Mrs. Murphy's out being mom, which she should be doing, so she's at a away volleyball game. So to fill you in for RMS, something great that's happened since the last meeting. They've started doing Zebra of the Week and has a wonderfully positive response from students, parents, and teachers on social media and in person. The uh, teachers nominate the students and the winner gets to choose two prizes. Uh, something they're working on behind the scenes is they are on their redesignation year for being a school to watch. I know what that process is like, so they are busting their behinds uh, behind the scenes to uh, get that nationally recognized award. So we were originally designated in 17, redesignated in 20, and then they're going for their second redesignation in 23. And she asked from you guys and wants me to say the RMS staff appreciates the positivity and support from the RCSC board. Ray Kissler, now it's me. All right, uh, Mr. Rini, uh, Secretary Zent, with the help of Stacy Shanehalls and Sue Cash, pulled off the 87 state championship celebration, which was a huge hit from the group of guys when they were out on the track before they walked out in front of the big crowd. It was kind of funny to hear the stories and what they had going on. Um, that same night, A.D. Rini pulled off homecoming with the help of uh, Mrs. Kirkwood, who's our student council representative, and then we also gave out the state rings to Coach Guard, the three assistant coaches, and our state champion, Marshall Fishback. So that was a crazy night there at the uh, complex, but we got it done. Uh, during the day, we had uh, female flag football, which was a hit. The juniors and seniors were in the championship, and it went to overtime. That was kind of a big deal with the student body, so um, that was kind of fun. We had two singers, Nick Prathletakis and Nikki Broyles, who made the All-State uh, Honor Choir, which is a huge accomplishment for our arts program, so we really appreciate them participating in that. And then uh, Coach Thomas and the Lady Zebra Golf Team got second at sectionals today. They're moving on to regional, um, so that's a pretty sweet deal for them. Uh, those young ladies swing a pretty good golf club. I'd be embarrassed to try and play against them. Uh, what we have coming up, we have uh, Rochester Metal Products and us, we've kind of collaborated. They've invited us to their open house on Saturday. We are going to provide transportation from the school to that open house, even though it's on a Saturday because our kids wouldn't go individually. So we're going to get them all together and take them <coughs> over as a group. Um, we have uh, PSAT coming up. Uh, I've taxed A.D. Rini and uh, actually I think Jesse Atkinson is going to be our adult building to get champions together, what we had at the middle school started over at RHS. Uh, we got two young ladies that put a beautiful presentation together uh, to present to Mr. Atkinson, so we're really excited about that. Um, first choir concert coming up, and the fall play has been cast and rehearsals have started, so that's uh, always exciting. And from you guys, Mrs. Vance took me someplace today that it was like a dream to see, and we've started conversations with different members of our community so if we ask you guys to come with us to see some things and to meet with some people, if one or two of you can make yourselves available for us at RHS as we move into the next level pathways, trying to bring in horizontal construction, trying to bring maybe some other CTE funded classes in. What we saw today was really powerful and I mean, it's a huge goal, but as we start to have those meetings with the chamber and FEDCO and things like that, if we ask you to come, it'd be awesome if you could step up to the plate and support us. So, <coughs> thank you, Oscar. Did you learn anything about the SATs this year? Like how you did it last year? Uh, so for PSAT, it's eight through eleven. We're still debating on whether we're going to give the seniors the time we did last year, or if we're going to try and create something where we talk to them about their FAFSA, we talk to them, have some businesses come in, talk to them about the opportunities. Like RMP is starving for help just like several other businesses in town. I know Lintech and some of the others are too. And so if we can bring them in and present what they have to offer to our kids and our college bound kids, we'll have some things there to help them maybe with applications and that financial aid piece. That's our big goal. That may be a year out. And so this year may still get a break, but we're trying to put it together right now. I just want to thank everybody in this room. It truly takes a village uh, to, to raise our children and collectively. Um, I, I appreciate everybody being here and sharing. There's tough conversations, but there were good conversations. So thank you for coming and, and being part of that discussion tonight. It means a lot. Anything else? No, that's it. If we, anybody have any questions or concerns at this point? 
Anyone else? I just yes, have a quick question. Signs. Sorry, it just kind of a weird question, and it's not a contentious question. I just kind of curious. What, what, how much funds does the local school board receive per student via state and via federal? Do you have a number with you? State is approximately Special ed grant and the Medicaid money is depending on the services that we go Medicaid for that can that can be very so. so is it more than state funding? No, we probably get federal federal by itself is probably a little over a million dollars, not counting cancer money, which is obviously quite substantial. So but the state funds, I don't know what I don't know if there's anything I don't know how that works with the state federal government or state tuition support if there's any connection there or not. Because a lot of times the federal funds are funneled to the state and the feds tell the state you have to do, you have to supply this per, as this a program or for this program and then the state comes to us from the state but they get it from the feds so you're still, you still have that triangle where you have to follow everything, you know, because the money originally came from the feds. There's a lot of programs like that. Too. Anything else? Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And second and then thirded. Okay. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a lovely evening. Anyone opposed to this?